Okay. Good afternoon, Diane and Norlin. Uh, my name is Septian Bayu Cristanto. I'll be your teacher or your lecturer in this course. And as you add in your uh, director course, we have the course line, the financial technology and data analytics. So before we start the course today, you need to know about the materials for you have been learned in this class. You will uh, give some material to the theme of uh, the payment gateways in Indonesia and also the, about the using of QR codes in current situations. And then uh, we will explore about the digital banking and for the next after the mid semesters we will uh, getting some course about the data analytics now uh, before i start the course i will show you about the materials okay this is the handbooks for uh, i mean like the pdf the Informations about the white paper, but the how to understand the role of payment gateways in Indonesia digital economy. This is our first material, and then for uh, this is for the two meetings. And the next two meetings, we will talk about the boosting the QR code in Indonesia. Uh, I mean, for the driving for the digital payments and enabling about the financial inclusions, especially in Indonesia. And then uh, we will talk about the digital banking and about how the growth of digital banking. And after the mid semesters, we will only focus from the data analytics uh, from the business data or for the market data so we can make some predictions make some uh, conclusion about the informations uh, and how to use about the data to the digital payment okay uh, sorry i stopped Okay, this is the material for today. We will be understanding the role about the payment gateways in the Indonesia digital economy. You can raise your hand or write in the chat box if you have any questions uh, while I'm giving some direction about the information in this course. Okay. We will start about the history of the cashless payments, uh, especially in the Southeast Asia, includes your uh, country, the Philippines, and also especially for the Indonesia. Okay. We have some uh, comparison data about the credit card use in Southeast Asia countries. We found that the highest of the bank account and credit card is very highly in the Singapore. This is the best in the Southeast Asia country about using the financial inclusions. From this data, we know that the Singapore have the good uh, financial environment and they have lots of bank accounts and the lot of the credit card use by the customer or the peoples and then they also uh, following by the malaysia in the second uh, in the next of ranking and also the thailand indonesia the vietnam and the philippines from this comparison of data the credit card use uh, your country is a number six Number six about the financial inclusions and sorry. Oh, okay, Diane, uh, you cannot join the audio, but still trying to fix it. Okay, no problem, no problem. Okay, okay. This is the data from World Bank in two thousand and seventeen. So from these comparisons, 
we know that the Singapore is having the good growth in the financial inclusions compared to Indonesia and the Vietnam and maybe for the country Philippines. In Indonesia, for the specifics, we have uh, the training for the Googles, especially from the micro, small, medium, and enterprises of ministry. And they have the contributions and combined with the foreign affair. And they have some training for the digital marketing, uh, for especially for the entrepreneur, young entrepreneur, to use about the technology and combine for the business. And what is the payment gateways for our financial inclusions? The payment gateways is like this area. This is uh, the starting point about the payment gateways. If you find the customer and they will be meet about the merchant business, like uh, make some point of sales or the transactions, and they will be going to the internet and they can make a online marketing or online sales using the internet and acquiring by the bank merchants. And then the bank merchants will be check about the credit card network and the customer will be have an issuing card uh, payment or the sales payment by the credit card bank. So in these situations or in these uh, transactions, the customer is not really meet with the merchant business. They only meet in the internet or in the online media and also with the online meeting with the merchant bank. So the merchant bank will be processed about the transactions using the merchant bank processor and also the credit card network. A tokopedia is the biggest of the payment gateway in Indonesia. We can make some uh, payments in any banks, like the transfer from the virtual account and maybe for the retailers, and also make some independent payment from the uh, retailers. I think in your company, um, in your in your country they have a difference or specific uh, financial inclusions about the facility of the merchant bank. But in Indonesia, we found about the lots of the payment gateway. And this payment gateway is not only for Indonesians activities or Indonesian sales, but also we can make some payment from the international activity, like the international transfer or internationals of sales by uh, companies to companies or G2G, government to government or business to business. Maybe one of these payment gateway is in your countries or in the Philippines, like the Aino or Cashless or maybe PitX or Finaps. But lots of this uh, payment gateway is having the inclusions or the uh, very more of information in Indonesia. So what is the role of this the payment gateways in our digital economy? We have some several data about the e-commerce transactions volume in Indonesia. We starting in 2014. This is the first time we found e-commerce transactions in Indonesia. And since 2014, they make some growth of sales in 2016. After two years, they make some uh, good growth from 18% to 25%. And then in 2020, it's like a boom. There will be uh, more than 125% about the transition e-commerce volume uh, is recorded by the governments in Indonesia. So this is a 
peak opportunity or peak comparisons for the period of 2014 to 2020, especially with the COVID-19 pandemics, the, the e-commerce transactions has been increased more than three times than 2016. Okay. From the data uh, in the Google Tema Sex, we have found about the size of the company that lots of transactions. In 2016, we found that e-commerce is the highest transaction in this country and following by the travels because in People of Indonesia like to make some travelings and some activity uh, going to the Southeast Asia country because of free of visa and then they have some rights and also with the advertisement. From this data, we know that in 2025 from the predictions, e-commerce will be huge than the travel and rights and advertisement activity. This is uh, the prediction in 2025. So we can see with the one of this online store, we have some information like the Jarvis store in Indonesia. And the Jarvis store is used by the customer in Indonesia and out of the countries. The Jarvis having uh, from international sales in Southeast Asia. You can check with this uh, websites about the Jarvis store and you can see about a uh, lot of products that we offering by these companies. And in Indonesia, we have the difference model of payment gateways. What is the difference? But we will know about the I know. What is the I know? I know is uh, like a micro payments, the payment gets free from the micro payments. The micro payments means that the transaction is by the retailer or individual from uh, the activities in the road or on the road, like the tall roads and maybe the uh, Hot metals in Indonesia and also with the activities in the government's road. And then we have the cashless. Cashless is a small payments that have been increased in the shop or the, I mean, in the small and micro shop in Indonesia because we need to uh, reducing about the cash case modes, but we are using the credit card or maybe with the digital payment or electronic payments using this application, the cashless secure payment in everywhere. And also we have the one of top of payment gateway in Indonesia called Mitrans. This is using by a lot of e-commerce productions or producer in Indonesia and we will know about the information and activity about the sales yes seven okay uh in activity in for uh e-commerce by the national or international sales and then for electronic wealth in indonesia or electronic payments we have the top of e-commerce in payment that we call doku doku is uh embedding for the Japanese uh, traditions. Doku is like the money or the seed money by the business, small business in Indonesia. And then we have the peer-to-peer -peer industrial uh, online, online lending, it's like the Sendit. Sendit is the name of the payment gateway that have the peer-to-peer of industrial lending. So the company can make some lending from the other company, not by the bank, but uh, they have the transactions and they have the informations and getting some uh, lending information 
from the other company. So they make some obligation and having some uh, payables to the other company. And for the bill payments in Indonesia, we have Sepulsa. Sepulsa is a payment gateway, especially for bill payments. And how to see about the business? Business works with the payment gateways. We can find about the Salora in case of the information. And Salora uh, is the peak of fashion e-commerce in Indonesia and now is operate in the Southeast Asia. You can find in the website of the Salora. Salora is established in 2012. But now it's making huge with the transactions, uh, and maybe the transaction is over the countries. Zalora is starting with the payment gateway in the end of the last year of 2012. And before that, they have the manual process, and now they have verification from bank transfer and cash on delivery, COD, and the shopper or maybe the customer can pay in when the package is arrived in the home or in the directions. The Zalora approaching with the new payment methods slowly and cautiously. They not make some extreme adaptions because they waiting for the customer reactions. So they very slow and very cautious because this e-commerce company have a middle class urban client not the rich client or maybe uh, with the people with the uh, high of the salary, they have uh, the target of middle class urban client. And they only selling about the fashion product and not in the high frequency, maybe in the one or two pieces, it's okay for the seller activity. And now they have the one of the big fashion e-commerce in Southeast Asia. Another study case is from the investory. Investory is a peer-to-peer -peer lending sector. We can find the companies that can lend some models or uh, for the individual or small business by the concept of lending phase among the investor. So the investor is compiling all of the investor and they can make some uh, installment in the payment with the investing fund with the sum of interest rate on the top. The collaborator in the payment gateway is having the different ways. They need to make some collection process and maybe with the possible of the uh, borrower information and make some installment uh, when it's due for the payment in the installment. So in the lender side, uh, it's different from the bank accounts. The lender is the company, not a bank. So in this case, the payment gets way is uh, between the companies to companies, not companies to bank. So by the information, you know that investor is connecting about the lending by the companies to the other small business, not by the bank. And now, this is the current regulation in Indonesia. In Indonesia, we starting about the e-commerce transaction in 2014. In this year, we have the first national cashless society. The first rule or the first regulation is published in 2014. In 2016, we have the regulations for the central bank, we call Bank Indonesia, to make some payment from the transaction process, including about the payment gateways. With these information, with the rules, the number 18 of 2016. These regulations is regulate about the peer-to-peer -peer lending transactions. And then in 2017, the central bank have the special regulation for the financial technology company, or we call the fintech company. Starting for 2000 and 
uh, 17, we have um, new terms or new environment about the financial inclusion using the fintech company. And now in uh, 2023, We have following about the next regulations like using the electronic money since 2018 and uh, like the revoking this or amending these regulations using lots of information about the central banks and also we still use in this year or this coming year. How about the future of the payment gateways? The feature of, of payment gateways is like this one. We have uh, some information about the transaction value growth by the marketplace in Indonesia. It's peer to peer, companies to companies. In 2016, we only have 3.3 million transaction about the e-commerce and then growth two times in 2017 and multiply in two times in 2018 and also grow steadily grow in 2000 until 2022 and now in 2023 we have uh, almost 70% of marketplace transaction using e-commerce so in the future maybe in the 2025 or 2030 We have lots of e-commerce transaction. As we know that any countries below the United Nations having the sustainable development goals, especially in the financial inclusion in 2023, 2030. We still moving in the next seven years to make uh, the financial free inclusions. in 2030 so from this information we should make a three uh, key of takeaways the first is uh, the payment gateway should be accelerate our digital economy with the growth and we can make uh, some quickly adoptions and make some emerging business model and maybe using the latest technology and also with the user experience and principles. And then the second key is we take some banks benefit from the payment gateway because it helped the merchant make some operation and maybe the ever change in digital landscape and also in the banking system. The banks do not have the bandwidth to make some information or to make some transactions. And the last key is the payment gateway have serving for unique purpose in the payment channels. It's so fragmented and maybe we have some barrier in the small business, but also we can make some uh, in the future, the bright future about the e-commerce transactions using the small business in Indonesia. This is the three leading key to make some payment gateway having a good environment in the uh, financial inclusion in the small business or maybe in the peer-to-peer -peer activity between the companies in Indonesia. Okay, I think this is uh, the first time meeting or the first information about knowing your payment gateway, knowing your financial inclusions, especially in the global and also specifically in Indonesia. Do you have any questions for this material today about the payment gateway from Norlin or maybe for Diane? None so far, sir. Okay, thank you for your response, Diane. And I will send you about the materials, but uh, in the first time, please uh, write your emails in this chat room. So I will recognize uh, your email address and then I will send about the materials and maybe some direction for the next meetings. But uh, in this case, we not also uh, we don't have a regular information about the 
online lecturing, sometimes we have some uh, maybe individual assignments. But uh, what is the assignment is I will send to your emails. Thank you, Norlin, for the emails. And may I have your email, Diane? You can write on the chat room, okay? Uh, thank you, Norlin. Thank you, Diane, for your good response. And wait, I will save this information. Okay. 